We're going to head back to the Lower East Side to the one street which probably has more history related to the mob, both real life and in the movies, than any other street in New York. For our next few sites, we'll be taking a stroll up Mulberry Street, the heart of Little Italy in Manhattan. While today Little Italy has considerably shrunk in size and population of Italians living here, this is where the many of the hundreds of thousands of Italian immigrants that came to New York City in the late 1800s through the early 1900s settled. Little Italy, along with neighboring Chinatown, is a section of the larger neighborhood known as the Lower East Side, a neighborhood within a neighborhood, if you will. Our first stop on Mulberry Street is right here at Dajanero's Restaurant, the original location of Umberto's Clam House, where one of the most well-known mafia hits took place in the early morning hours of April 7, 1972. Joseph Crazy Joe Gallo was the man responsible for the barbershop assassination discussed earlier of Albert Anastasia back in 1957 and also was behind the slaying of Joe Colombo up in Columbus Circle. On the evening of April 6th into April 7th, Gallo was celebrating his 43rd birthday at the Copacabana with his family, including his wife and her 10-year-old daughter, as well as actor Jerry Orbach and his wife. When the Copa closed at 4 a.m., Gallo and his group headed downtown looking for a late-night snack. Unable to find an open restaurant in Chinatown, the party headed over to nearby Mulberry Street and found the brightly lit Umberto's Clam House still open. Without realizing it, Gallo had stumbled into a restaurant run by relatives of Matthew Matty the Horse Ionello, a capo in the Genovese family. The group was eating, laughing, and enjoying themselves when a balding man in a sports jacket flung open the restaurant's side door on Mulberry Street and unloaded his automatic revolver on the party. As the women screamed and dishes crashed to the floor, Gallo bolted for the main door in Hester Street and was hit five times. Staggering outside, he collapsed a few feet from the door. The shooter, with a slight smile of satisfaction, left out of the side door and jumped into a waiting car. Gallo's bodyguard fired shots at the getaway car, leaving pockmarks on the buildings across the street on Mulberry. The police arrived in minutes and took Gallo to a hospital just minutes away, but it was too late. He died in the emergency room from loss of blood before surgery could even begin. The slaying of Joe Gallo in front of innocent women, relatives, and a child violated mafia protocol. But the mob justified it as retaliation for committing a cardinal sin in the mafia, a hit on a boss without prior authorization by the commission. This was the assassination of Joe Colombo in Columbus Circle talked about previously. Two blocks up from Dodge and Arrows is Mulberry Street Bar at 176 and a half Mulberry Street. It's most famous for its role as the Averna Social Club in The Sopranos, as well as being featured in the films Donnie Brasco and Godfather Part Three. This 1908 restaurant has seen its fair share of mobsters over the past 100 plus years, who enjoyed the more private upstairs dining area to hold meetings or enjoy a meal. A couple more blocks up Mulberry, and we come to the former headquarters of John Gotti's Ravenite Social Club. Today, an upscale shoe store in a trendy section of the original Little Italy, now known as Nolita, for north of Little Italy. The Ravenite Social Club had long been a mob hangout. Earlier, it had been a meeting place for the notorious Lucky Luciano in the 1920s and 30s. In later years, it had become the headquarters of Agnello Della Croce, the underboss of the Gambino family and soon after, John Gotti's headquarters when he took over as boss after arranging the hit on Paul Castellano in front of Spark Steakhouse in 1985. De La Croce's intriguing tales of mafia stories when he worked under Albert Anastasia in the 1940s and 50s influenced John Gotti to take on Anastasia as his role model. Albert Anastasia was known as the Lord High Executioner and was the founder of Murder Incorporated. Organized crime detective Ralph Salerno said that the only mobsters that sent a shiver down his spine were Carmine Galante and Agnello Della Croce. You looked at Della Croce's eyes and you could see how frightening they were. The frigid glare of a killer, Salerno said. 
Delacroce's apartment was just across the street from the Ravenite at 232 Mulberry Street. 